Hello Laddingtons, this is a follow-up video to my game and book review of The Witcher. Saw a comment saying that the author, Andrzej Sapkowski, had plagiarized his character, basically copied someone else's work. And I looked into it and just thought it would be a good idea to respond to it because I thought it was a bit silly indeed. Now first and foremost, I want to mention the contrarian nature of everyone who criticizes him. Whenever there comes anything popular, you always have these guys just, they have to go against the grain, they have to be contrarian, they have to find faults. And you know, sometimes it's good to go against the grain. It's good to say your piece if something is obviously wrong. So you know, I say porn is wrong even though it's very popular, because I know it is wrong. But some guys, they just, for the sake of it, have to be special, unique, they want to be apart from everyone else and saying, you know, this is bad. So therefore they find faults. In this case, they find faults with The Witcher because, yeah, they want to be unique. So they come up with these points of contention, which I have looked into and um, I will refute them now. But before I do so, I would like to share some plans with you all, my esteemed subscribers. I'm actually writing my second book right now. It's not a fiction book, it's more a social, cultural and political analysis of a few things. But in the long term, I do want to write fiction, fantasy or historic fiction. I just need to sharpen my pen a bit more, so that's why I'm writing a second book now. And also because I have a lot of things I want to say. Uh, but anyway, I thought to mention this before I actually release a fantasy or, or historical fiction book. And that is also to do with original ideas, original names, etc. So that was just the preface of my me refuting the points of contention. So any anyway, first thing, the white wolf is a moniker used by um, Sapkowski, the witcher Geralt of Rivia is called the white wolf and apparently the other character is also called the white wolf and this is rather silly I would say you know the white wolf is hardly an original moniker I don't think he's the first fantasy author to use the name I don't think there has never been a historical figure who has been referred to as the white wolf or the wolf you know I call myself the lion sometimes just as plenty of other historical figures or even fictional figures you call yourself the lion because you want to evoke a sense of royal majesty a sense of vitality and power that's why you do it same thing with a wolf and I don't think the story would have been any less good if if Geralt was called the strong bear or something like that. Now of course a white wolf is more suiting because he has white hair. Which is also the second point of contention. Apparently the other character also has white hair. Now we can talk about blonde hair. First and foremost you might wonder why my hair looks a bit darker and a bit more dull now than it did when I had long hair. Simply a matter of sun bleaching, a lot of sun bleached, a lot of accumulated sun bleached hair. But uh, give it a few months then Helios and Balder will bless my my hair with the golden luster again. But anyway, speaking of hair, basically all other heroes have long blonde hair. You can talk about Beowulf or Achilles or elven heroes, everyone basically looks the same. Speaking of elven heroes, here is the most epic of descriptions. Glorfindel was tall and straight, his hair was of shining gold, his face fair, young, fearless and full of joy. His eyes were bright and keen, and his voice like music. On his brow sat wisdom, and in his hand was strength. So if I write a fantasy novel or a short story, with a guy who has long blonde hair, would I have copied someone else's work? No, it's just an archetype. Same thing with having white hair. 
you know, the story of the Witcher could have been equally good if he had brown hair. It's not a big deal. So just because two characters have the same hair color doesn't mean it's uh, copied. Then the third point of contention, having a magical sword. And I would say in basically all fantasy stories you have magical swords. It would be strange if a character didn't have a magical sword. Even in the Arthurian legend you have Excalibur, a magical sword. It adds to the story. It's nothing unique, it's nothing original. When I write the story I will probably also have a magical sword imbued with some sort of cool thing or whatever. So in my opinion the Witcher isn't good because he is using magic, it's not good because he uses a magic sword, it's not good because he has a moniker that is a white wolf, it's not good because he has white hair. He could have had brown hair or blonde hair, the series would have been equally good. So it's not a success because he has similar attributes as someone else. It's a success because it is written in an entertaining and interesting way. I like them, I like the books because there is a lot of nuance to them. In terms of geopolitics, economics, societal issues, uh, even tolerance as I talked about, sexual morality. You know, he imbues the stories with a lot of relevant and interesting social commentary. And that is also why I like it. Because it creates a bit more, it makes it a bit more immersive than just having, you know, battles and heroics, etc. Now, furthermore, in regards to fantasy, my favorite setting, the Warhammer world, which is, geographically speaking, our own world, but with some changes. Also inspired by European history, you have Kislev, which is Russia, you have the Empire, which is basically the Holy Roman Empire, and you have classical elves, which, you know, for a contrarian guy, he would say, oh, these guys have just copied Tolkien's work. And I would say, no, they have just built on Tolkien's characters. They've just taken elves, put them in a different setting, add a bit of grimness to the dark elves, add a bit of nuance to the high elves, etc. But I don't see it as something bad. I just see it as a very nice setting. And Games Workshop, if you're watching this, please do release more books from the old world. It's a superior setting to Age of Sigmar. I'm sorry to say it, but you know it's true. Um, so anyway, you don't always need to find, you know, nitpick fault. You can just enjoy a story. So that was just my response to the controversy, if we shall even call it that, of uh, The Witcher. So anyway, since this is a bit more light-hearted topic, I might throw in some other clips after this little sequence. So uh, yeah, enjoy that. And uh, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you're all staying safe. XXO. I was supposed to post boxing footage, but then I reminded myself that I will actually make a separate video. It will be a quick heavy bag workout you can do at home for everyone who is fortunate enough to have a heavy bag. But anyway, I thought just put in some gaming footage from The Witcher 3. Vesemir and Geralt are being attacked by a griffon here, as you might see. So, uh, yeah, again, I will recommend the game Good Times, Good Times. And now the Cuddle Princess demands my attention. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. XOXO, boo.